In this video, we'll have a look at Newton's method. We will start by finding the roots of a simple function, and then see how to use the method to find the minimum value in one and in two dimensions. Let's begin by studying the following function. This function has two roots, which means that the curve intercepts the x-axis at two points. To find the two roots, we set y to zero and solve for x. The roots of a quadratic equation can be found by the following formula. If we plug in the values and do the math, we see that the first root is about 0 0.58, whereas the second root is about negative 2.58. Let's place the roots here as a reference. We will now find these roots with a numerical procedure called the Newton's method, also known as the Newton-Repson method. This method is commonly used when we have more complicated functions than in this example. The method starts from a value that is initially guessed by the user. Suppose that our initial guess is here too. To get closer to the root, we must, in this example, somehow reduce the value of x. Newton's method is based on tangent lines. If we place a tangent line to the curve, when x is equal to 2, it will look like this. The new x value is where this tangent line intercepts the x axis, which seems to be around 0 0.92. However, how do we calculate this? From the video about the straight line, we know that we can calculate the slope of a straight line like this, if we take the difference between two arbitrary points on the line. Let's place the function here and denote the left-hand side as f of x. The derivative of this function, by using the power rule, is equal to 4x plus 4. We can use this function to calculate the slope of the tangent line when x is equal to 2. We see that the derivative of the tangent line is 12, which means that we in this case know the slope of the tangent line. We also know the x-coordinate of this point, which is 2, and the y-coordinate, if we set x to 2 in this function. We also know that the y-coordinate of the second point on the tangent line should be equal to 0, which means that we should be able to find the x-coordinate of the second point if we solve this equation for x2. Solving this equation for x2 results in the following equation. Since we know that y2 should be equal to 0, we can simplify the equation like this. Let's rename x1 and x2 by x old and x new. y1 is the value of the function at the current x value, which can be calculated if we set x to 2 and do the math. We therefore know that the numerator should be set to 13. The slope of the tangent line at the current point can be denoted as f prime x old. The derivative or the slope of the tangent line when x is equal to 2 is 12. If we plug in the values and do the math, we see that the new x value should be about 0 0.92. This means that the current point will move to a new location on the curve where x is equal to about 0 0.92 which corresponds to where the tangent line intercepts the x-axis. Our current x-position is now 0 0.92. We now update the x-position with the same math as before. If you plug in the current x-value in these functions, and do the math, and plug in the values, we see that the new x-value should be about 0 0.6 which corresponds to where the current tangent line intercepts the x-axis. The point is therefore moved to the following position. Note that the x-coordinate is now very close to the first root. If we continue to iterate a few more times, we'll get the value that is very close to 0 0.5811388. Suppose that we now initially guess x to 0. The tangent line 
would then intercept the x-axis at 0 0.75, which means that the point will move on the curve to the x-coordinate 0 0.75. In the next iteration, the point will go back like this. If we instead would initially guess x to negative 2, the point would approach the second root. If we continue to iterate, we will obtain the second root. Note that, if I happen to initially guess x to negative 1, we will run into problems. Because the derivative at this point is equal to 0, and since we cannot divide by 0, no new x value can be computed. We will now see how we can implement Newton's method. I will here use the software R to do this. We first enter the function and the derivative of the function. We can use the following code to generate this plot. Next, we enter an initial guess. Then we enter this equation. We will iterate this piece of code until the absolute difference between old and new x values is less than, for example, 0 0.000001. We here use a counter that is increased by 1 for every iteration. For example, if the function has no roots, the iterations might continue forever. This is why we will break the loop if we have done more than 1000 iterations, because we must at some point give up searching for the roots if they do not exist. Similarly, to avoid that we divide by zero, we can also stop the loop if the derivative is close to zero. Finally, we print the estimated root and some information about the iterations. If we run this code, we see that we obtain the first root with high precision after only 5 iterations. If the number of iterations happens to be equal to the maximum number of iterations, the method has not converged, which means that no root has been found. We can also see the derivative at this root. Note that by using Newton's method, we have solved this equation for which the right-hand side is equal to zero for a certain value of x. We'll now see how we can use Newton's method to instead find a minimum or maximum of a function. We then use basically the same equation, but where we divide the first derivative with the second derivative at the given x value. If we differentiate this function, we'll get the second derivative. To implement this, we add the function for the second derivative here, and change the equation so that it is based on the first and second derivatives. For this typical example, the method will find the minimum value after a single step. This is because Newton's method uses quadratic approximations at each step. Note that the method can also find the maximum of the function, because the method will go in the opposite direction when the second derivative is negative. If you use the following function and start at x equal to 3, it will find a minimum value after 5 iterations. If you start here, it will instead find this maximum. Note that we cannot start at 0 because the second derivative would then be equal to zero, which means that we will have zero in the denominator. The method can also be used to search for the minimum value in several dimensions. Suppose that we have the following function. Since we compute the gradient based on two dimensions, we will update both x and y. The derivative of the function now corresponds to the gradient which involves the partial derivatives of the function at the current point. The derivative of this function with respect to x is x plus 2, and the derivative with respect to y is 2y plus 1. This is the so-called Hessian matrix, which includes the second derivative with respect to x. The second derivative with respect to x is 1, and the second derivative with respect to y is 2. This notation tells us that we should first differentiate with respect to y. 
which results in 2y plus 1. If we now differentiate with respect to x, we'll get 0. To update the position of the current point, we multiply the inverse of the Hessian matrix by the gradient at the current position. Suppose that we initially guess x and y to 7. Then we would identify the minimum value of the function already after the first step. One problem with Newton's method is that it is sometimes problematic to calculate the Hessian matrix and its inverse. This is why the Gauss-Newton method is commonly used in nonlinear regression, because it approximates the Hessian without the need to compute the second derivatives. This was the end of this basic video about Newton's method. In the next video, we'll discuss the Gauss-Newton method. Thanks for watching.